I want you to open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. In it, we find one of the most famous miracles of Jesus, and we can glean an important life principle from it that we can use in our Christian walk. And that life principle is to keep our eyes on Jesus. So let's see what we can learn from this. Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So most of you know the story of Jesus walking on the water, as well as Peter, who temporarily also was a part of this miracle, where both Jesus and Peter both walked on the water. But I want you to see something here. In verse 23, it says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Jesus had his eyes on the disciples the entire time. He was on top of a mountain and he was praying. And while he was praying, he had a good view of the Sea of Galilee that was in front of him. So he could see that the disciples were sailing along. And even though it was at the darkest point of night, depending on whether the moon was out or whether it wasn't out, Jesus, being God, knew where his disciples were. And he saw that they were being tossed and turned by the waves. So everyone knows the story of Jesus walking on the water. It's one of the great miracles of the Bible. And in this miracle, Peter also partook of it as he was able to temporarily walk on the water as well. The key is that Jesus invited him to come and Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, was able to walk on the water. So I have a question to ask you. What are your eyes looking at? In today's world, we have so many distractions. Our eyes are looking at everything. We are looking at the weather, we are looking at social media on our phones, we are looking at the news, seeing how terrible the world is. We are looking at everything else and we are getting distracted by it. What is dangerous is that whatever our eyes behold, that is what enters into our heart. So if we keep consuming bad news, bad reports, our hearts end up becoming down, distressed, depressed, and disheartened. We are always tempted to believe whatever we see. Out of the five senses that we have, we end up relying on our eyes the most. This is why blind people, with them not having any form of sight, their other senses, All those other senses are heightened because the main sense is not in use. 
or is not available to be used. But those of us who are not blind, who are able to see, we end up using our eyes the most. We use our eyes to gather as much information as possible. For example, when you are driving down the road, as much as you are using your hands and your feet to feel the components of the car and whatnot, we always use our eyes. On our driver's license cards, there's an entire section dedicated to the condition of your eyes. Well, at least here in South Africa. I'm not sure how it is around the world. But in South Africa's driving licenses, there is a section that denotes the quality of your eyes. We use our eyes to see everything. And quite often, we rely on our eyes much more than we rely on our faith. We see things that dishearten us and we often forget the scriptures. In this situation, we see that the disciples are caught in a storm. And as a result, their eyes are all focused on everything that is going around them. They are focused on the waves that are crashing into the boat, the water that is completely pummeling them, the wind that is contrary against them, blowing them up and down the boat, seeing the wind, the clouds, the rain, the seas. They are seeing a complete storm and they allowed their hearts to become disheartened. They allowed their hearts to become down. They allowed fear to creep into their spirits. But be honest, a lot of us would have that as our natural reaction. Even though Jesus was the one who told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake. When we are really hit with a crisis, we don't usually think of what Jesus said. We don't usually go into our own Bibles to see what the Word says. When our eyes are beholding whatever the crisis is, we see the reality of the situation and we allow ourselves to become disheartened. But it's so funny because in the fourth watch of the night, in verse 25, it says Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying it is a ghost. They cried out of fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. What can we learn from this? The word of the Lord is the first thing we need to hold on to whenever we are faced with a crisis. Whatever circumstance comes up against you, whatever crisis hits you, instead of allowing the circumstance to cause you to go into fear, go to the word of the Lord and hold on to his promises. It's so funny, the disciples saw Jesus and they thought it was a ghost. Usually in times of panic, in times of distress, in times of fear, our own eyes play tricks on us. We end up believing things that are not actually true. We end up making judgment calls that end up being wrong because it's based on false information. The disciples, having known Jesus, having known Jesus is God, was looking at Jesus coming towards them on the boat. Fear came up in them. You don't blame them because they were already afraid in the first place considering that they were in such a terrible storm. But when Jesus told them, it is I, be of good cheer, do not be afraid, you could say that it put them at ease, but not everyone believed. Because Peter said in the next verse, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. It is funny how we end up not believing Jesus when he gives us his word. He gives us his word and we still don't believe it. We still try to say, Lord, if it is you. The disciples knew by this point in Matthew that Jesus is God. So they knew that if anyone could walk on the water, it was him. Yet at the same time, despite Jesus telling them that he was there with them in the storm, they didn't calm down. They even doubted the word of Jesus. 
That is why we must always make sure that we are not in a place of fear, but rather in a place of faith. Because if we are in a place of fear, we end up saying the wrong things, believing the wrong things, and making the wrong decisions. So with that, the disciples were still a little troubled, despite Jesus being there. Why are you worried? Why are you worried about your situation, about your circumstance? When Jesus steps into your situation, something is bound to happen. In this particular instance, a great miracle occurred. If Jesus steps into your situation, something is bound to happen. Despite Peter asking a question that had a little bit of doubt and fear in it, Jesus entertained him. Jesus told Peter, come. And so we find that Peter partakes of this miracle of Jesus. Peter came out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Imagine that. Imagine that Peter, having full trust in the Lord, it definitely was an act of faith for Peter to go out, but he only had that faith when Jesus told him to come. In Peter's mind, he must have thought that if this truly was a ghost, the ghost would not have told him to come. But Peter was the one who had the faith to go on the word of God to come and walk on the water. Can you just imagine Peter's experience? Peter, who had got off the boat, put his foot in the water and as he shifted his weight from the boat into the water, he saw that he wasn't sinking as he was looking at the face of Jesus. But this is the most important thing. So Peter walks on the water with his eyes fixed on Jesus. And as long as his eyes are fixed on Jesus, he walks on the water. As long as you have your eyes on Jesus, you can walk over what other people are drowning in. That is the power of Jesus. When you keep your eyes on Him, instead of focusing on your circumstances, on your problems, on your crisis, on your fear and on your doubt, the moment you keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we end up walking over what other people drown in. This is why sometimes you look at Christians and they tell you their testimonies and they look nothing like what they have been through because they kept their eyes on Jesus. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, He strengthens us. He gives us power. He gives us strength. He gives us healing. He gives us deliverance. We get all of that when we keep our eyes on Jesus. When Peter was walking, no doubt, the wind was blowing, the waves was crashing. Peter undoubtedly must have been getting wet as well. But despite the circumstances around him, despite the problems around him, despite the issues around him, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he did not drown. Jesus is the one who kept him afloat. When we follow after God, it is his hand that upholds us. We mustn't think that when we go through situations, when we come out of our problems, when we end up going to the other side, that it was because of our efforts, that it was because of our works, and that it was because of our power, in a way. To do so is to spit on the work of Christ. It is only through Jesus that we are alive today. It is only through the Lord that we can testify of how good He has been, of the things He has taken us through. It is His hand that is holding us, that is protecting us, and that is keeping us. We end up walking over what others drown in. And it is only like that if we keep our eyes on Jesus and not on the waves. As soon as Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he started drowning. In verse 30 it says, But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Peter's great act of faith is now contrasted with Peter's 
lack of faith. Peter took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the waves. And this is the interesting thing. Peter didn't start sinking because he took his eyes off the waves only. He started sinking because he took his eyes off the waves and he got afraid. That is the difference. Jesus is not telling us within our own lives to ignore the problems that are around us, to forget about everything that's going around us, to not have responsibility over things that we are actually responsible for. Jesus is not telling us that we can't look at our problem and acknowledge that the problem is there. Jesus wants us to look at our problems and to turn to him and say through you, I can overcome this problem. Peter's mistake here is that he was afraid. He allowed fear, doubt and unbelief to creep into his heart. And as soon as that happened, he started sinking. In whatever problem you are faced with today, acknowledge that the problem is there. Don't pretend that it's not there and you end up not taking any decisions to mitigate it. That is worse than trying to do something to solve the problem. Rather, whatever problem you're facing, acknowledge the problem is there, but keep your eyes on Jesus. The waves are there, the problem is there, but I'm not going to allow myself to be in fear. I'm not going to allow myself to be afraid. I'm not going to allow myself to be in doubt and unbelief. I'm still going to trust in God. I'm still going to keep my eyes on Him. I know that if He's taken me through problems and situations before, He will take me through problems and situations now. Peter only began to sink as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus and was afraid. Another thing I want you to see here is that Peter exemplifies how man is. On one moment in our Christian life, we are full of faith, we are full of power, we are full of trust in God. As evidence when he got off the boat and started walking on the water. And then the next moment, he's full of fear and unbelief and starts to sink. We are human. Our faith level may not always be the same every second of every day. But the most important thing is that we need to develop our faith to the point where it becomes second nature. This is why Jesus asked Peter, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter would have kept being above the waves, even if he took his eyes off Jesus for a split second to look at the waves, as long as he did not let doubt and unbelief. Jesus did not rebuke him for taking his eyes off of him. He rebuked Peter for having doubt within him. Do you believe that Jesus can help you? Do you believe that Jesus will help you to overcome whatever problem or situation you find yourself in? Do you believe in Jesus' words that we should not worry, that all the Father has is ours, that he is with us? Do you believe that? Or do you doubt? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We need to make up our mind as to whether we are going to trust Jesus and what he has said or whether we are going to trust the world and follow what the world says. The last thing I want to talk about is probably my favorite thing. When Peter cried out saying, Lord save me, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. What grace! Peter, who had so much faith to trust Jesus that he wouldn't sink in the water, who ends up disappointing Jesus, allowing doubt to creep up into his heart and start sinking, Jesus was right there and immediately he reached out his hand to save Peter. In our own lives, there may be momentary lapses where we end up allowing the world to creep into our hearts, the doubt, the unbelief and the fear that is so prevalent in the world. We end up allowing it to creep into our heart 
and diluting our faith. Despite that, Jesus is right there, ready, willing, and able to grab us when we start sinking in our own situation. The question is, will you reach out your hand to grab Jesus' hand? You have a choice in this. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, save me. Sometimes we are sinking and we communicate to Jesus whose hand is outstretched to us. No, I'm fine. I can do it. I can manage. Don't worry, Jesus. These waves are just crashing over me and I'm drowning here, but it's okay, Jesus. I don't need you. Jesus is right there, ready, willing, and able to help you. Reach out and touch him. Grab his hand and let him pull you out of your situation, of your circumstance, of your old life. Allow him to make you into a new being, a new creation, a life that is turned to him. Exchange a heart of stone for a heart of flesh, a soft heart that is influenced by Christ. Whatever situation you find yourself in, just know that Jesus is always there with you. He was there with Peter when he started to sink. He brought Peter out of the water and he walked with Peter on the water back to the boat. We live this life off of his power, off of his strength, not of ours. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Whatever you look at, remember Jesus. Remember his word. When you see things that cause fear to come up within you, respond with faith, knowing that if God has taken me before, he will take me through this now. When you hear news supports, when you browse through social media, whatever your eyes behold that may allow fear to creep up in your heart, respond with faith. And remember your Creator. Remember Jesus, who has taken you successfully thus far. Surely He will take you through whatever comes your way in future. As long as you keep your eyes on the Savior, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will be able to walk over what other people drown in. You will be able to walk over whatever waves may come against you and you will not be affected by them. So you have a choice. Are you going to look at your waves or are you going to look at the one who empowers you to walk over them?